Okay, so now to the actual uh, sort of mathematical contents, and we will go to the Jamboard now, and I will actually maximize this. <clears throat> so this is trying to illustrate um, how the types are important when solving equations. So I'm showing here two equations. Um, the first is x plus 2 equals 3, and then the side comment saying that x has type natural number. And then we can solve this equation saying, well, actually, if we let x equal 1, that is the solution to this problem. But if we take the next problem, x plus 3 equals 2. We've just swapped the 3 and the 2 here. And it's the same kind of equation. But if we require that the solution be a natural number, then we will have to say no solution exists. So of course, that's probably not what we are interested in. We really want to find a solution to this equation, but then we'll have to change the type of the x. So if we say instead, okay, let x be an integer, so including both positive and negative numbers, then we suddenly have a solution. Then we have x equals minus one as a solution to x plus three equals two. So as you can see here, the existence of solutions really depends on the type of the free variable in the equation. So this story can be continued and I will now rather briefly continue it. This has also, of course, historical connections. I mean, uh, when neg negative numbers were introduced, they were called absurd numbers uh, because they were sort of numbers were really counting things that you could, um, so uh, you have uh, three um, apples, you have five apples, you have perhaps zero apples, but you cannot have negative two apples. Uh, of course, when people started doing economy and loans and so on, then the, the concept of, of actually having negative money started becoming really relevant and the, the, uh, this was developed. But okay, let's move to the next level. So we have, have moved from natural numbers to integers. And I've denoted here the integers with a C. Uh, but then we, we change from addition to multiplication here and try to see, can we solve this equation? Can X times two be equal to three with an integer as a solution? So the answer then is of course, no, again, because we don't have an integer. Any integer multiplied by two will be an even number and three is odd. So we cannot solve that equation with that typing. So we need to extend our numbering system again. We change the type. So if we take the same equation and change the type to saying x is a rational number, then suddenly, oh yes, we do have a solution. Then we have the solution x equals, and then usually this is written three halves. So you could say that this is a little bit of cheating. So we suddenly said, well, it's, it's some number that we would get if, if we would divide three by two. And, and you could say here that the problem of finding this x is finding the solution to the division of x three by two. And having this notation here is not really solving the problem. We just said that, well, if we could solve it, then this would be the solution. But that's a rather typical way of solving uh, problems when you in increase in, you invent new types that you, you start with a new notation and then you see what are the algebraic laws? How do you multiply this? How do you add them and so on? And of course, we, we could also use, uh, in this case, we could write it as 1.5. So it, it has a finite decimal expansion in our normal system. So, uh, but if the arguments would have been the other order, if it would be x times three equals two, 
then we would not be able to write a finite uh, decimal expansion in our usual uh, digit system. But we could easily write two thirds here instead of three halves. So that's the, the, the gain of having um, rational numbers as solutions. But it shows a little bit of a, of, a, of a step that is often useful also when we go to more complicated equations. So now we could ask, okay, have we now, do we have enough numbers now? We've sort of started from natural numbers, we went to integers, and now we're at the rationals. But uh, we can still come up with equ equations, which will be troublesome here. So uh, I've stated yet another equation, the x squared equal 3. So we had x times 2 equal 3, where we could solve it if we went to the rationals. But here, yet again, we actually have no. There, it, there exists no, no rational uh, solving this equation. Solving x squared equals 3. Proving this uh, is, is not a difficult exercise, but it was a, a, a bit of a breakthrough, actually, from the, uh, well, was it 2,500 years ago, I think, uh, the old Greeks um, managed to prove that you, you couldn't really take roots unless you had an even square uh, with rational numbers. So that was a bit fascinating. They used geom geometry to prove it, which is a bit odd for us moderns, but algebra is perhaps easier. So anyway, this equation then, at the same time as before, we can extend. We can go from the rational numbers to what we usually call the real numbers, even though the, these numbers are perhaps not very real in the sense of the real world. I mean, rational numbers, we can definitely divide up things uh, into different parts, but, but real numbers, they are a little more magical and uh, they are difficult to work with in the computer, for example. But if we ask for the solution for x in r, then yes, we have a solution. And then we have the solution square root of 3. So notice again, just as I did with the, with the, um, um, the quotient, the ratio of 3 halves, I've invented new notation here. The square root sign is just basically saying that, well, okay, we got an equation here, x squared should be equal to three. Uh, I'm not quite sure what, what x that is, but let's just write that, that it's, it's the number whose, uh, so the square root of three is the number whose square is three. So it's a bit of a specification of a problem. It's not really solved. And here, as with um, two thirds, we can't really, type it out uh, in a finite number of digits. Okay, question, could the type be used to intentionally restrict the mathematical expressions that are allowed? Um, I guess that's what we're doing, yes. I mean, when, when one, one of the main ideas of this course is that it is important to, to use types in mathematics because sometimes, and this is a typical example of that, what type you give to a certain variable will determine if there are any solutions or if there are many solutions. So it can definitely be used intentionally to restrict the mathematical expressions that are allowed. Um, but uh, if we want to talk about mathematical expressions, then we probably would have to go to the abstract syntax world. Here, we're, we're not quite gone there yet, but that's definitely an important question. I mean, how, how do we express this? If we would like to implement real numbers, exact real numbers, I mean, then probably we need a data type where square root is an operation. So we can have square root of three as a number stored in the computer as being the square root of three and not just being 1.71 and so on, because there will always be an approximation otherwise. So anyway, if, if we move from rationals to real numbers, we can also solve a number of these equations involving, so all e equations involving roots of positive numbers. But you might guess where this is going. Um, it's clear that there are still equations we cannot solve even here. 
So we, if we just make the very small change of saying that the right hand side should be minus one instead of three, we say minus one. And we ask again, okay, can we find an X, which is a real number? And then we will again have to answer, nope. Because uh, X square is greater than or equal to zero for all X in real. So as the square is always greater than or equal to zero, it can definitely not be minus one. So yet again, uh, here is a case where mathematicians have moved further and said, okay, let's invent yet another uh, step in this chain. Let's move from real numbers to complex numbers. And if we have complex numbers, then usually would you say that, okay, uh, X is the square root of minus one or X equals I is often the, the notation written. And again, I want to see that we, we've invented new notation here. I mean, square root of minus one or the I is a new way of inventing a new number. And we have to then figure out how do we do all the arithmetics on this new type. And I will talk about uh, the complex numbers quite a bit for the rest of this lecture. Um, but I will go back to uh, Emacs to do it. And then I will also take this opportunity first to ask if there are questions so far. And then to make another break in the recording to make the chunks YouTube sized.